everyone. Welcome to Shell Point Today for Monday, May 18th. I'm Dan Filgrain. On today's show, we will find out if posture really is the answer when it comes to strength and stability in an upcoming Health Connections class. And Mary Moore of the Legacy Foundation will talk about what to expect on the financial front after a loved one passes away. Also, we'll go diving for lobsters just this one more time. But first, we want to remind you that tomorrow morning is the second session of Adrian Kerr's class on Iran, its history, and today. It's where East meets West in this fascinating presentation on one of the oldest continuous major civilizations of the world. The presentation begins at 10 a.m. in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands tomorrow. Tomorrow evening is the dinner at Sip's Place on Sanibel Island. Indoor or covered patio seating is available at this family-owned establishment, where meals are cooked to perfection and the ambiance is warm, friendly, and unpretentious. The cost for the trip is $7 with dinner on your own. Court pickups begin at 4.30 p.m. on the island tomorrow. Okay, so it's time for me to stand up straight and talk about good posture. If posture is the answer, then what is the question? Well, certified instructor Lindy Smith visits with Heather Batty to talk about this question and the importance of replacing a bad habit with a good one for better breathing and control or stability. The upcoming class will be fun and interactive. Soon you'll go from being a learner to one who practices good posture. Hi, I'm Heather Batty with Resort Services, and today I'm excited to be here with certified instructor, Lindy Smith. Hi, Lindy. Hi, Heather. Heather, I can't help but notice that maybe we need to talk about posture today. What's wrong with my posture? Well, by sitting kind of rounded shouldered like that, you're sort of inhibiting your breathing and your spine is in an unnatural position. Don't you feel better sitting up? Oh, I do. Yeah. I can actually feel my breathing actually does not feel as labored as it was. And I was trying really hard. <laughs> uh, well, and also you might notice um, my core belief, if you get that uh, play on words, is that the more you use those muscles to hold yourself upright, the easier it becomes to hold that posture. The good habit is replaced by the bad. And you're gonna be presenting this class, posture is the answer, what is the question? So what is the question? The question is, why do so many of the things we do in our daily life rely on that core strength, that posture for better breathing and for more control of where we are in space? And what I like to talk about are the things that people are familiar with, such as if I were to do this, Heather, what am I doing? Oh, watching TV, remote control. That's okay, right, got that's it. right. And if I were to be walking, and doing this, what would I be doing? Mm, let's see, with a walker? No, in a, in a grocery store, you've seen me. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, leaning That's on right. the cart. Right, right, yes. And even driving like mm. this. It does take its toll after a while, and for some reason, it's harder for us to keep those shoulders back and our core strong. Sure. What I'd like to do with the Shell Point participants is work on things together, a collaborative effort to present ideas to each other on what we can do to keep our posture intact and foremost in our daily life. Okay, so you're more of like a brainstorming with the residents to kind of get together and talk about those incidents where we are, you know, showing that poor posture in ways. What are some kind of ways that we can remind ourselves? Often at the end of the day, you're tired, like you said, grocery shopping. Do you have some key things that you tell people to kind of think about or remember to say, okay, have those shoulders back? Yes. Heather, the first 15 minutes is going to be a presentation. Okay. So if you want to know more, you'll have to come. But what I'm going to do in that 15 minutes is talk about those things that you just brought up. And then I'm going to put in the context of, again, habits, but also how we can move forward in little baby steps. You know, if I were to say to you, I'm going to run a marathon next week, and you ask me, have you ever run a marathon before? And I say, no, I'm just gonna get a new pair of shoes and run a marathon, you'd say. No, definitely <laughs> don't do that. You're crazy. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> well, the same thing goes with changing our posture or 
some of the other habits that we have, you can't overnight expect your body to be retooled to accept a new change unless you work in little baby steps. My presentation is going to focus on that, on what we can do every day to sort of work towards a bigger goal of being reminded subliminally mm -hmm. after a while of where we are in space and what we're doing to either compromise or enhance our posture. Yeah, well, that sounds like a wonderful program. And again, so the program is posture is the answer. What is the question? And this is going to be on May 23rd with Lindy Smith. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you. One of the most stressful times of our lives is often when a spouse or a loved one passes away. Then what do we do? How will it affect us financially? What about estate settlements? Mary Moore of the Legacy Foundation is standing by to give us some insight and talk about an important seminar that will address the many questions and decisions one faces during these circumstances. Hello everyone, I'm here with Mary Moore of the Legacy Foundation. We're talking about this month's Legacy Seminar in the Academy of Lifelong Living. What now? Thank you for joining me, Mary. Good morning, Terry. The topic, what now, mm -hmm. is just so important to each of us. I mean, l being able, because of our Legacy Foundation and who you bring us, to plan ahead for the eventuality that we might lose a loved one. That's right. We have two um, gals from Northern Trust coming, Betsy Alderman and Gail Newharth. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're going to talk about what now, what to do uh, when a loved one passes away. Uh, as far as the estate settlement process goes and any financial implica implications that that would entail. And how wonderful, because at a time like that, our minds are not focused so much on how do you get through these legal That's right. details. And to know that somebody has taken the time to give us information ahead of time, we can get our estate plan up to date. That's right. This seminar is good for anyone, men and women, mm -hmm. way before this possibly, possibility could happen. Um, and just the Legacy Foundation tries to bring these seminars to our residents um, so that they can prepare for all of these things. At the Legacy Foundation, we will review your estate plan, no obligation and absolutely free, um, to see if you have everything in place. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of what uh, Betsy and Gail will be discussing at the seminar. Sure, it's not necessarily something we want to focus on or no. think about. It's like the back in the back of the closet, the elephant in the room. Be prepared, that's the... But being mm -hmm. prepared. And it's not like we have to do it on our own. We don't have to go on Google and try to look all this up. We that's have the right. Legacy Foundation. Exactly. As a matter of fact, uh, the month of July, we're going to have uh, advanced directives month where you can come in and update your living will and health care surrogate. Um, and you can always come into, shell, into the Legacy Foundation and meet with Jeff Corey about your uh, estate plans, and he can make sure that they're up to date with the latest uh, forms and, and everything that you need to, to make sure you have covered. Well, we all know how wonderful it is to get information before that emergency kind of feeling or that stressful kind of time That's happens. Right. It, it just takes some of the stress out of it, doesn't it? Absolutely. It's the wrong time to do it is when it happens. Exactly. Doing it beforehand is going to make uh, the... Uh, the tragic tragedy and the process so much easier to, to handle. It is. Now, these two women, Gail and Betsy, mm -hmm. you know them. You know. Well, actually, we know uh, Betsy. Uh -huh. Gail is someone uh, that we've just met. Uh, we have been um, friends with Betsy. They've been a friend of Shell Point for, for many years, nice. and Jeff and I knew her when we used to work together uh, when we first came to Shell, to the Legacy Foundation uh -huh. back in the early 2000s. And uh, now Betsy, uh, she is with Northern Trust, and she has, um, you know, a lot of credentials that um, would apply to this type of subject, yes. Okay, so I think the description says it best. What happens when your spouse or loved one passes away? What do you do now? What will the next year bring? Gail Newharth and Betsy Alderman will discuss the estate settlement process so you know what to expect on the financial front during this delicate time of which, truth. Which is all about preparation, so you already know what to expect. Well written, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you do take advantage of this great opportunity with people that Jeff Corey and Mary Moore are bringing to you to cover the topic that is of interest to everyone. By now, most of you know that many are planning to be at the Lobster Bake this evening. In order to keep you excited, we thought we'd share this lobster promo one more time. 
I'm Caitlin Vanskoy, and I'm here to tell you about the lobster bake this coming Monday from 6 to 9 in the Woodlands Commons. I hope you bring your appetite. Dan, Dan what are you doing here? Hey, I can't hear you. Hi, Caitlin. I, Hi. I got you some lobsters for the lobster bake. Well, let me see that. These look a little small, don't you think? Too small. We promise everyone over a pound lobster. Over a pound? Well, these are no these good. These are too small. Hey, I know. What? They got really big ones in Maine. I'll be right back. Wait, wait, wait. Well, I guess he's going to Maine, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you Monday. Okay. And now, let's bring you up to date on all the latest happenings, Academy News, Menus, and Village Church Connections, right after this Listening to the Words preview from David Hollenstein. Welcome. This week's Listening to the Words program will paint word pictures of some strange and wonderful places. At the New Orleans Mardi Gras, you'll hear about parade floats from which a thousand well-dressed women throw their specially decorated shoes into the crowd. Also, listen to a man describe his meeting up with a Florida panther that stood just 15 feet away, staring at me, he said, for what seemed like forever. You'll hear an expert try to explain why God made Florida mosquitoes. You'll hear Shell Point storyteller Howard Silverman report to his mother about the wonders of high-tech restrooms. You let yourself bathe in several fanciful pieces on Southwest Florida's flora and fauna. David Howenstein inviting you to experience this week's program, repeated every half hour, Monday through Sunday, on Shell Point Channel 12, and anytime and always on my Shell Point webpage at www.shellpoint.net slash listening. Hi everybody, I'm Bev Chandley and I'm here with the happening segment of Shell Point TV to tell you about the activities that we offer for you here today at Shell Point. We're going to start this morning's activities at 8 o'clock with men's match play doubles tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. We have virtual bowling at 8.45 at the Resident Activity Center. At 9.15 we have billiards at the Resident Activity Center and we also have a 915 kayak trip. This is the lollygagger paddlers. They'll be meeting at this kayak storage facility. And pottery with instruction available is in the pottery studio also at 915. At 10 o'clock, we have the men's match play doubles tennis at the tennis courts. Also, we have our Susie Q boat going out at 10 o'clock. They're going to the Matanzas on the bay. You do need to sign up for those trips. The Disciple Men's Study Group will be at the Game Room of the Woodlands at 10.30. And at 10.45, we have Table Tennis Clinic going on in the Tarpon Room. 11.30, we have a Health Connections class, Bar Basics at the Health Club, and that's currently full. Now we're going to continue into the afternoon with a 12 o'clock Mahjong game. That's in the Sable Room of the Woodlands. Advanced Table Tennis will be in the Tarpon Room at 1.15. Also at 115, we have Samba, the card game that's at the Resident Activities Center. And we have a Health Connections class at 145, Balance and Mobility Training Level 1. That's in the Health Club and it's currently full. And the BDI Bead Club will be down in the Oak Room of the Woodlands at 2 o'clock. At 3 o'clock, it's time for another Health Connections class, Pilates Stretch. That's in the Health Club on the island. We have a 3.30 Health Connections class, Aqua Agility and Conditioning. This one's held at the LifeQuest Aquatic Center on the island. And then we have Pickleball Courts, busy with pickleball at 4 o'clock. 5.30, we have the singles table at the Crystal Dining Room. Now we have the authentic Maine Lobster Bake at 6 o'clock. You do need a ticket for that, and it is currently full. At 6.30, we have Duplicate Bridge in the Game Room of the Woodlands. And then 7 o'clock, we round out the evening with square dancing, and that's held in the health club on the island. Well, thanks for joining me today, and I will be back here again tomorrow to tell you about Tuesdays. Hi, I'm Carrie Colath with your Academy information from Monday the 18th of May. 
at 10 o'clock, we have many years of food in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. This is a coffee with a neighbor, and a ticket is required. At 10.30, Anatomy of Words will meet another time in the Oak Room of the Woodlands, and again, they welcome everyone. At 1.15, Making Word Work for You continues in the Te Technology Teaching Center on the island. We have new classes tomorrow I'd like to tell you about. Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve will start another phone photography workshop. And Professor Adrian Kerr will do his second session of Iran, its history, and today. The weekly summer walk-in iPhone iPad clinic will meet once again. And organize your files and start shredding with Al Kaplan of Oakmont. Menus for Monday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is braised pork with mashed potatoes and asparagus. The dinner special is all home cooking night for eleven ninety five, and the soup of the day is chicken gumbo. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a New Orleans burger with onion rings for seven seventy five. The dinner special is barbecue shrimp over citrus and almond salad for eight seventy five, and the Palm Grill is closed on Monday. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. My name is Janice Quinlan, and I have been serving with the Village Church since August as your international worker in residence. Many of you know that I spent five weeks speaking in New England in late winter, and today I would like to share with you a highlight from my trip. I was born in Connecticut. Whenever I am back there, I make it a personal goal to visit Mountain Grove Cemetery in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Someone special, whom I have never met, is buried there. I have visited her graveside dozens of times, just to clean around the stone, leave flowers, or just visit for a while. The first stone we visit is that of Phineas Taylor Barnum. You probably remember him from the circus. P.T. Barnum was an author, publisher, philanthropist, and politician. When you look at P.T. Barnum's personal marker, there is barely visible on the front of the stone these words, not my will, but thine be done. You cross the simple cemetery road to the gravesite of Charles Sherwood Stratton, better known as General Tom Thumb. Tom Thumb became famous in P.T. Barnum's circus. In his adult life, Stratton was only about two feet, nine inches tall. P.T. Barnum purchased a life-size statue of General Tom Thumb and placed it as a gravestone at Mountain Grove. The two are buried a stone throws away from each other. Two men who left their mark entertaining crowds in what was the greatest show on earth in its day. Then we walk a short distance to the spot which holds the remains of one of the most prolific hymn writers in history, writing over 8,000 hymns and gospel songs. She also wrote and published over 1,000 poems. Frances Jane Crosby is who brings me back to Mount Grove again and again. As an infant, Fanny caught a cold and mustard poultices were applied to treat the discharges from her eyes. She believed the procedure damaged the optic nerves. Just before her 15th birthday, Crosby enrolled in the New York Institution for the Blind and there learned to play the piano, organ, harp, and guitar. She later joined the teaching faculty there. Some of Fanny's best known songs include, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, Blessed Assurance, Praise Him, Praise Him, Rescue the Perishing, To God Be the Glory. While Fanny will probably always be known for her hymns, she wanted to be seen primarily as a rescue mission worker. She worked for decades in many of the New York City missions. She chose to live in such areas of Manhattan as Hell's Kitchen, the Bowery, and the Tenderloin. She was aware of the great needs of the immigrants and the urban poor. She often gave the $2 fee, which she received from her publishers for writing one of her hymns, to her work with the poor. F Fanny spent the last decade of her life in Bridgeport, Connecticut. She died there in 1915 
at the age of 94. Her home in Bridgeport is now the men's home of the Bridgeport Gospel Mission. Fanny Crosby's stone bears her name. On the front is inscribed these humble words, she hath done what she could. The smallest of headstones for a giant of a woman of faith. Decades after her death, a new gravestone was dedicated, just close to her original stone, by Crosby's friends to whom her life had been an inspiration. It contains the first stanza of the hymn, Blessed Assurance. Fanny may not have a big expensive plot like P.T. Barnum or a huge monument with a life-size statue as General Tom Thumb does, but Fanny Crosby, the blind hymn writer, has profoundly blessed the church with her 8,000 hymns. And yes, she hath done what she could. Well done, good and faithful servant. Your hymns continue to bless the church a hundred years after you've left us. On behalf of the Village Church, may you be inspired by the life of this woman of faith. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. Return tomorrow when Kathy Miskell will talk about customer service and the Employee Christmas Fund Drive. Heather Batty and Melanie Broad will give us another fit tip. And we'll find out all about this year's summer concert series from Resort Services Manager Don Boren. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Monday, May 18th. I'm Dan Philgreen, and from, be from behalf of all of us on the beer. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for... Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Monday, May 18th. I'm Dan Philgreen, and on behalf of the entire Shell Point TV staff, we'd like to wish you a wonderful day, and we'll see you again tomorrow. <laughs>